Hey folks, it's Nick. I'm here with Carrie, and today we're going to give you all the information you know about growing year-round and using frost blankets in the cold. So the very first thing I want to talk about is what are we actually trying to combat, and that's frost. So frost forms whenever ice crystals form on a cold surface, whenever there's a lot of moisture in the air and the temperature drops to below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And it's important to look at how different environmental factors affect that cold air transition into frost. And the very first thing is a clear sky. As the heat rises from our, the Earth's surface at night when the sun goes down, a clear sky lets that happen much faster. So you're most always going to uh, form frost on a cold, clear night than one with clouds. So calm air or light winds allow the cold air to settle. So if the wind is strong, it can dry out the air near the surface, which might prevent frost even if the temperature is below freezing. Therefore, calm to light winds may often favor frost formations. The frost almost always forms around the dew point. And the dew point is the temperature in which air becomes cold enough to go from a gas to a liquid. Whenever that liquid reaches a colder surface or anything below 32 degrees, which may be leaf tissue, that's when that frost will form. The next thing would be cool temperatures. The surface temperature must drop below freezing for frost to start forming. The colder the temperature of the surface, the quicker the frost is going to form. The next thing would be topography. A lot of us are farming in lowlands or flatlands that are often at the bottom of a valley or something like that. All that cold air is gonna drift down throughout the hills and the valleys and settle in those low spots. So again, all these things all start adding up. Cold temperatures, the dew point, a lot of moisture in the air, calm light winds, a clear sky, add all that up and if you're at the bottom, you're for sure going to frost. So as farmers and gardeners, we need to think about ways that we can kind of mitigate against frost. So the very first thing we're going to look at and the thing that we, almost constantly ask whenever we're asked anything at customer service or on email is the plant selection. What are you going to grow? So choosing frost tolerant plants suited to your local climate can help prevent frost damage. Knowing local growing conditions and why forming a relationship with a seed company and the reps servicing your area is valuable. Those reps might know about a slight crop selection variety adjustment that can mean the difference between a crop failure and crop loss during a frost. So the next thing you can do is why we're here on this video is to use frost blankets. Now we're going to cover it in such depth here in a minute that I'm just going to kind of gloss over it now and go to the next thing, which is watering before a frost. It may sound counterintuitive, but watering before a frost helps to insulate the plants against the cold weather, wind, the settling, and kind of insulates the root zone and everything else. Uh, you'll see this a lot in orchards where uh, citrus is involved. So if it works for them, it's for sure going to work for you in your cold tolerant plants. The next thing we can look at is mulching the base of the plants or the rows of the plants to add that uh, mass and a thermal layer in addition to frost blanket, in addition to everything else we're going to talk about today to protect those root balls. The next thing is placement of plants. Now for farmers, we may be stuck with, hey, look, we're out in a field, but uh, if we're doing herbs or cut flowers or we're uh, working around an urban homestead, we can take a look at, can we plant something closer to a building? Can we plant a hedgerow or a windbreak or anything in that manner to kind of further give yourself a little distance between you and the frost? And so the best thing you can do is to use some of these methods and the frost blankets in which we're going to cover in just a bit. So we know frost is going to happen and we know that there's ways to help prevent and mitigate some of this uh, damage, but I wanna take a look at why we're preventing frost from uh, hitting the leaf tissue and what damage it can actually do to your crops. That way you kind of know what to spot and why we're doing what we're doing. So the first thing that we'll discuss is actual damage to the leaf tissue. When frost forms on the plants, it causes the water inside of the plant to freeze. And when that water freezes, it expands the cell tissues and causes them to rupture. Once the ice thaws, the cells cannot regain their original shape which leads to wilting and browning affecting the tissues of the plants. But in the pictures you can see, this, this is the very first thing that you notice, a, a black leaf, a brown leaf, and you know it's just not coming back. So what this can mean is some plants, especially if they're cold hardy, they can bounce back from it. Some, you can lose a whole leaf and there's still more uh, on the bottom side that's gonna be fine. But for most of these plants, a lot of it's going to be damaged in that you're not taking as many leaves to uh, harvest 
you're not taking as much fruit to the market. And so you're damaging the amount of sellable product that you can have. So you may not be killing the plant, but you're reducing your income on the back end.